Good morning, kids, and welcome to Upstreet Online. And we're so glad that each and every one of you are here. And I'm very jealous that you guys get to be in your pajamas. But we started the theme of cooperation two weeks ago. Do you guys remember what cooperation is? Well, it means that it's working together to do more than you can do alone. God made us to cooperate. With God's help, we can see that people around us need us. Then we can work together to make things better for them. We have looked at incredible examples of cooperation from the Bible in the last two weeks about Moses and the Israelites. In today's Bible story, it took place in the town of Capernaum. It happened during the time Jesus lived on earth. Jesus was teaching amazing things that no one had ever heard before. Not only that, he was healing people who were sick. A group of friends were determined to help someone in need, no matter how difficult it became. They never gave up. They worked together to help their friend get to Jesus. Because of their cooperation, Jesus healed their friend and the man was able to walk. That sounds like an amazing story and I'm so excited to learn about the Bible story with you. But before that, let's get up on our feet and it's time to sing and dance and praise God all together. When we worship God, it's like we're all joining together with one heartbeat. Our hearts are full of joy because of the love God has shown us. And that's not all. We can show God's love together with the way we treat people every day. Let's lift our voices and sing.
What's up, everyone? I'm Haley, and nothing cheers me up like a good sing-along. Of course, sing-alongs work a lot better when you're not the only one in the room. Sorry, Warren. <laughs> they really require cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Sing-alongs bring people together. They make people happy. And they can make the world a better place. I love it when musicians get together for a sing-along to help raise money for other people. This one's for the children. There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. You see? Different people with different talents all coming together with the same goal, to help people in need. That's major cooperation. Today's story is about a person who was in need and the friends who worked together to help him. Maybe my musician friends can help me with my sing-along. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Much better together. I'll see you soon. Bye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Imagine living in Judea 2,000 years ago. If you got sick, there were very few doctors. If you couldn't see or hear or walk, there was no one you could turn to for help. Please, help me. But when Jesus began to travel and teach and heal, Suddenly, there was hope. A way to get better and start life all over again. Stories of Jesus reached a man in Capernaum who couldn't walk and his four friends. Let's call them Leo, Mike, Raph, and Donnie. Jesus is in town. Right here in Capernaum. Over at Joe's house. Ginormous crowd, dude. The man who couldn't walk tried hard not to get his hopes up. I can't even get there, much less fight my way through a crowd. You don't have to, cause we got you. Ready? Dude, one, two, three, lift. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the man's mat. Together they carried him out of the house and down the dusty road. Soon, they could hear the sounds of a large crowd. There's Joe's place, oh yeah. What's happening? People jammed in 20 deep around the door. We got religious leaders, teachers, poor people, rich people, standing room only. Actually, there's no standing room, dude. Only room is up. Sure enough, around the back of the house, the four friends discovered a narrow staircase up to the flat roof. Wait, how is this any better? And down, dudes. Hold it. We can't even hear Jesus. Oh, we can't hear him yet. That's about to change. Help me pry up this clay. It's time to raise the roof. Within minutes, the four friends pried up large sections of packed clay to reveal a rough thatch of sticks connecting the roof beams. <laughs> Gotta bust these out. And voila. As dust and beams of sunlight spilled into the room, the four friends could see the shot crowd gaping up at them. The only one who didn't seem shocked was the man at the front, watching them with deep, kind eyes. Jesus! Hey, all y'all people down there, get ready, cause our friend is coming through. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the mat and began to lower their friend into the rough hole they had created. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wait, wait. You can't do this. What is this? Hold on. 
In spite of the confusion, the man who couldn't walk was finally lowered to the floor, right in front of Jesus. The nerve! Just look at all this damage. Jesus wasn't looking at the damage or the shocked crowd. His eyes went from the man on the floor to the four faces peering through the hole in the roof. In their eyes, he'd read what they'd done and how certain they were that he could heal their friend. He saw their faith. Then, Jesus smiled at the man on the floor. Friend, your sins are forgiven. <gasps> the religious leaders didn't dare speak their thoughts aloud, but inside their heads, they were nearly screaming. Who is this fellow to say such an evil thing? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus could tell exactly what was going on in their heads and hearts. Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? He wouldn't dare. Well, at least everyone will see he's a fraud. Jesus had God's power to meet the greatest need of the man who couldn't walk by forgiving his sins. But that wasn't something the religious leaders could see. So Jesus gave them something they could see. I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus looked down again at the man on the mat, right into his eyes. Get up, take your mat and go home. It seemed that everyone, from the four friends on the roof to the people jammed in the doorways and windows, was holding their breath. The man who couldn't walk sat up. Then he stumbled to his feet. His friends cheered. Oh, you got this! Deep breath. Baby steps. Bring it, dude. The man took a step, a hop, a leap. I, I can walk. I can walk. Praise God. The man grabbed his mat and danced out of the house to meet his friends for a group hug. The crowd was amazed and filled with wonder. Most unusual thing I've seen in all my years. Well, praise God. Praise God. Through the power of God and the help of a few friends, the man who once couldn't walk now ran home on his own two feet. His life forever changed. Whenever Jesus was in town, people hurried to see him. The word was that Jesus could miraculously heal people. So the man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus. And his friends went above and beyond to make that happen. They saw a need and they worked together to do something about it. And don't miss this, don't miss this. Jesus saw that the man had a different kind of need. It's the same need that all of us have. The man needed to be forgiven of his sins. He got the miraculous healing he was looking for, plus he was forgiven. You and I can have that same forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So there are needs all around us, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, even the world. And you can do something about it, but you don't have to do it alone. Right? B A N G O. Bingo! You can work together with others. Maybe you can form a team to help clean up your park or help out in your neighborhood. Maybe you could put on a show to help raise money for people in need in your own community or in other countries. Sometimes needs seem too big to tackle alone. So why not work together? That's the one thing to remember today. Work together to help someone in need. Ask God to help you see the needs all around you. And together, we can make the world a better place. I'll see you next time. Rock on, people! Y'all come back now, you hear? Like, bye! <laughs> what they said. Wow, that was an amazing story. And it shows us what it looks like to work together to help others around us. Whether we know it or not, there are needs everywhere. In our neighborhoods, at the park, in our schools, maybe even at your own home. Sometimes the needs can be overwhelming, 
but you don't need to do it alone. God provides us with friends and community to work with us to help others around us. As followers of Jesus, we should want to treat others the way we want to be treated. And that's exactly what this man's friends did. They saw someone in need and they worked together to do something to help him. That's something that we can all do. We can work together to help someone in need. Let us pray together as we finish off today. God, thank you for this amazing example of cooperation. These men loved their friends so much that they did whatever it took to get him to Jesus. They knew that Jesus had the power to heal. Please help us work together like they did. Show us how we can share your love by helping people in need. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online today and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.